In this experiment, we're going to be converting sodium benzoate to benzoic acid. Sodium benzoate is an ionic compound, and because it's an ionic compound, it dissolves in water. So we're going to begin by taking about two grams of the sodium benzoate, and we will be dissolving it in about 10 milliliters of water. All right, we're starting out with about two grams of sodium benzoate. It doesn't have to be exactly two grams, just somewhere in that ballpark. And the first thing that we're gonna do is take this little piece of weighing paper. I'm folding it up to make it easier to pour the sodium benzoate off the paper into the beaker. I'm gonna set that on the balance. And then I'm gonna tear the balance and try to get this turned around just right tear the balance and so notice right now it's actually giving me the mass of this little weighing paper i'm going to hit zero that resets the balance to zero so that i know that everything that i'm pouring on here it's not factoring the mass of the paper uh, when you are weighing especially directly from the actual bottle of stuff it's a really good idea that you don't jam um, spatulas or things like that into this bottle that introduces contamination this like the safest way to measure it is to just use the bottle and just really carefully just kind of tap out what you need don't go too fast and i'm just you know kind of keeping an eye on the display making sure that i'm not getting too much rotating the bottle helps to pour some of the stuff out it gives you a little bit more control this is obviously you know kind of scary way to do it but this is definitely the best way in terms of avoiding cross contamination and remember i don't have to be exact in my two grams 2.1 something is fine so i'm going to step back and let the balance stabilize and once it stabilizes there's our mass 2.194 grams I'm gonna use a graduated cylinder to measure the deionized water. And remember, when you are measuring with a graduated cylinder, you wanna get down at eye level, just to make sure that you get a pretty accurate volume measurement. Although in this situation, it doesn't really matter um, if our volume of water is exactly 10 milliliters or not. Once all the sodium benzoate has dissolved in water, we're gonna add some hydrochloric acid. It's pretty dilute concentration, three molar, and we're gonna be adding about five milliliters or however much it takes. When we add the hydrochloric acid, it is going to protonate the negatively charged oxygen on the sodium benzoate, and this is gonna convert the sodium benzoate to benzoic acid. Even though benzoic acid is polar, it is not soluble in water. And this means that we will see it form 
because it will not be able to dissolve in water. So we will be able to see the formation of the benzoic acid. The amount of hydrochloric acid that we need to convert this into benzoic acid depends on exactly how much we started with. But one of the kind of nice things about this is that we really can't add too much hydrochloric acid. So just, we just wanna add a lot. We're gonna start with five milliliters. So I'm going to measure it into, I'm using the exact same graduated cylinder that I used for the water, which is totally okay. We don't have to worry about any kind of contamination because there's already a lot of water in there. And I'm going to just take a look at how much I've got right now. Looks like I have almost five milliliters. I'm going to put a little bit more in there. Like I said, it doesn't matter if we add too much. We're just trying to make this solution acidic and it's totally okay if we make it extra acidic. I'm gonna begin by just putting a little bit in. We don't wanna add too much at once. I'm just gonna start with a little bit. Woo! And you can see that that worked really rapidly. And I know you can't, you can't, you, since you're not touching this, you probably can't tell the texture, but it's pretty thick and it's chunky. It's, um, it's definitely a, a thick solution. I'm gonna put in a little bit more. Now, one of the ways that we're, ooh, look at those chunks right there. Look at how thick it's getting. So one of the ways that we're gonna be able to tell if we've added enough acid is just by checking the pH of this solution. We wanna get the pH down to at least two. It's totally okay if the pH is lower than two, but we know once we get down to a pH of two, we will have gotten basically 100% conversion to benzoic acid. So I have got some universal pH paper that we're gonna be using to test the pH of, of this mixture. And it seems kind of weird to be testing the pH of something that is clearly so solid, but uh, it is damp, so it's gonna work just fine. Now, one of like the most common mistakes that students make when they're using pH paper like this is that they take a strip of pH paper and then they just shove it right into the beaker, which is really wasteful because you don't need to shove the whole thing in there. Plus also it does um, in introduce some contaminants into your beaker. The best way to check the pH of a solution is just to take a little strip and to take whatever you're using to stir with and then just touch it to the pH paper like that. And it just gets the pH paper damp and then you compare the color to the color chart on the, on the um, package. And so that little damp spot that we have there, it's like, looks like it's around, uh, it hasn't really changed color at all, it's yellow. And remember, we're trying to get down to a pH of, of two. So that means we just haven't added enough hydrochloric acid yet. It's just not good yet. So ooh, we'll just add a little bit more. Now I have, at this point, I've used all the hydrochloric acid that the instructions said that I needed to use. And if my pH isn't all the way down to two, then that just means I'm gonna be adding extra pH or extra hydrochloric acid. So I'm gonna get that last little bit of hydrochloric acid mixed in there and we'll check the pH again. And we're looking for like a red color. Look at that. So we can see looking at the pH chart there, that looks like it is around one. We've actually gone lower than two, but again, that's okay. We're trying to make this an acid. We're trying to make benzoic acid. And so it's okay if our pH is really, really low. So this looks like um, it's done in terms of getting all, all of our benzoate converted to benzoic acid. What we want to do next is isolate all of this beautiful white fluffy stuff. And I'm going to um, get ready for us to separate this. We're gonna vacuum it out of solution. To help uh, help vacuum, help the vacuum process work a little better, what we're gonna do is chill this. So I have this beaker here that's got some ice cubes in it and just a little bit of tap water in it. And I'm going to set this beaker down in here really carefully. I don't want it to get submerged because I don't want any of the water to get mixed in there. And I'm just gonna let it sit there and get cold for a few minutes. 
When the benzoic acid is done forming, we're gonna separate it from the mixture using vacuum filtration. Remember that we have this mixture of benzoic acid, the byproduct sodium chloride, and then there's also some water present as well. There's water present um, because we added it in the very first step, and also our hydrochloric acid solution was a three molar solution in water. So we're gonna take this whole entire mixture, we're gonna pour it into the funnel. The benzoic acid, because it is a solid, is gonna be trapped in the funnel. The sodium chloride and the water are gonna pass through the funnel and they'll be collected in the filter flask in the bottom and this will be discarded as waste. Okay, now our benzoic acid has been sitting in ice and it's still sitting in this, in this beaker of ice and I'm gonna leave it there until we're ready. We are, we're ready to filter. We're gonna be using vacuum filtration. And so I wanna show you how to assemble the vacuum filtration. This is a sidearm flask that we're going to connect to the vacuum, which is this orange tubing right here. Uh, and the vacuum tubing is really, really stiff. So I like to clamp the flask down so that I don't have to worry about the vacuum tubing tipping the flask over. The funnel that we use for vacuum filtration is called a Buchner funnel. This is two separate pieces right here that we're just gonna snap together. It comes apart to make it a little easier to clean. We need this rubber adapter that goes inside the flask and then the Buchner funnel fits in it. And right now it's pretty loose, but as soon as we turn the vacuum on, it's gonna tighten itself right down. The last really important component is our piece of filter paper. The filter paper is cut to fit perfectly inside the Buchner funnel, like that. And so we're pretty much ready to go. You cannot dump your solution directly into a Buchner funnel that you're going to vacuum if your filter paper is dry. So the first thing that we have to do is get our filter paper a little bit wet. I am going to do that with some, this is a little bit of water that I have had chilling in this beaker the whole time. So I don't know if you noticed that earlier, I had this graduated cylinder sitting in here, um, just to get this water nice and cold. And so all I'm doing is just pouring a little bit of water onto that filter paper and it's just making it damp. That's going to help create a really good seal. Now I'm going to just kind of slide this out of the way and I'm going to plug in my vacuum tube and I'm going to just get everything ready. Here's all of our benzoic acid. Look at how thick and chunky it is. I'm going to scoot this out of the way. I'm going to turn my vacuum on. Make sure it's got a really good seal. And then I'm just gonna begin transferring. Now this isn't a liquid, so it's, it's not gonna pour very well. So I'm gonna have to help by scraping and scooping it onto this funnel. And I'm gonna do as much as I can with my glass stirring rod. And then I'm gonna transfer to a metal spatula. Because the metal spatula um, is gonna let me really kind of get scrape all the stuff off the edges really well. And my goal here is to get as much of my benzoic acid out of the beaker as possible. Although it may be that I just can't get it all out and that's okay. This is a really thick chunk of stuff in here. So one of the things that we can do to help kind of increase our yield in this reaction is taking some water and rinsing out the inside of this beaker. We want to be really careful that we don't do that too much because every time we add some water in here, a little bit of our benzoic acid is going to dissolve and that's going to make us lose product. So we don't want to do it too much. I'm not going to try to completely clean this out because I don't want to risk losing any of my benzoic acid product. But just a couple of quick rinses, that'll help me transfer quite a bit. The rest of this, I'm just gonna lose, you know. The last thing that I want to do is clean up the benzoic acid that's in my little um, Buchner filter funnel. And I'm gonna do that by rinsing or washing with this really cold water. And again, I don't want to use too much because every time I add some water, 
There's a possibility that a little bit is going to dissolve. And there we go. So what we're gonna do is just let this sit with the vacuum running for a couple of minutes. That's not gonna get it completely, totally dry. We're going to need to let this sit overnight and just air dry the rest of the day. So we'll come back tomorrow and we'll get a final mass measurement on how much of this benzoic acid we actually made. Here is the benzoic acid product. It's all, you can see it's all nice and dry. And so what we're gonna do now is just get a final mass so that we can calculate our percent recovery. And as I'm doing this, like I wanna get as much transferred out onto the weighing paper as is reasonable, but I also don't wanna risk tearing the filter paper and accidentally transferring some little shards of filter paper. So I'm not going to try to get 100% of it out of the beaker or out of the, the funnel, just kind of as much as is reasonable. And let me make sure this is centered. Here's the recovered mass.